Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. This episode may include topics, references, or discussions around sexual assault, domestic violence, stalking, physical violence, or subject matters that may be disturbing to some of our listeners. We do acknowledge that this content may be difficult. We also encourage you to care for your safety and well-being. Shocking, sad, revealing, and deeply researched, PH Murder Stories podcast covers the true account of infamous killings and true crime stories from the Philippines. There's no such thing as questions, just hidden answers. Stay tuned as we revisit the inconceivable crimes that exist. Some listeners may find the following content of PH Murder Stories highly disturbing due to its graphic nature. PH Murder Stories does not condone nor promote violence of all sorts. Viewer discretion is advised. Maraming salamat, Karen, at uh, ayon sa pulisya, ito na ang tinuring na pinakamadugong uh, krimen na nangyari sa kasaysayan ng bank robbery sa bansa. Siya ang natanghal sa pulisya na patay dito sa loob mismo ng RCBC Bank dito sa Science Park, Kabuyaw, Laguna. At ang malaking uh, ka problema ngayon sa kanila ay kung paano isinagawa ng mga suspect ang karumal-dumal na krimen. Sa ipinilus daw ng mga suspect, malaki ang paniniwala ng Calabarazon PLP na inside job ang naganap sa panuloob ng banko na ikinatawi ng siyam na tao. This one of the angles that we are looking into, pwedeng may kasabwat sila sa loob. At sa mga summary execution daw na estilo ng pamamaril sa mga biktima, malinaw raw na walang intensyon ang mga suspect na ilang buhay ang niisaman sa mga ito. Two years ago, High-profile convict J.B. Sebastian died inside the new Bilibid prison, allegedly due to COVID-19 as a serious factor contributing to his sudden demise. Shortly after Sebastian's death, notorious carjacker Raymond Dominguez was found lifeless inside the National Penitentiary with natural causes as the reported cause of death while waiting for the official medical legal report. This series of notable deaths within the corners of the correction now leave the public's eyes to the rock star of Bilibid, Herbert Colango. Herbert, also known as Ampang Colango, gained his prominence being the head of a notorious robbery group linked to several gruesome crimes in the early 2000s. He was also reported as the leader of well-known gangs, such as the Waray Waray and Osami's robbery gangs. Before we proceed, please do follow us on Spotify and Apple, and don't forget to leave us a rating. On May 16, 2008, eight bank employees, a security guard, and a depositor were lined up and blown out of their heads after a group of men robbed the Rizal Commercial Banking Corporation, or RCBC, located at Science Park Branch in Cabuyao, Laguna. This summary execution-style robbery was tagged as the bloodiest bank robbery in the country's history, as they were all sprawled on the floor, with a single gunshot to their hand. One of the suspects narrated the incident to the media due to his troubled conscience. He said, A vehicle carrying five suspects arrived at the bank between 8.15 to 8.20 a.m. Three of them went out and registered themselves at the guard's logbook. A guard went out and let the suspects enter. The other two followed them inside the bank. As the suspects entered the establishment, several gunshots were fired, but residents nearby the area heard nothing. The incident was only discovered after the bank failed to open and customers alerted authorities. Police recovered empty bullet shells of 9mm and Super 38 calibers. According to the police report, the five suspects introduced themselves as cops. However, 
investigators failed to find the names used in the logbook in the roster of Philippine National Police personnel. Based on the logbook, the suspects surrendered an Armalite and magazine ammunition upon entering the bank. The vehicle used was also found with no plate. Authorities also discovered that the suspects had allegedly taken around 12 to 15 million pesos. The Ampangkolango robbery group was linked to this horrible crime presently known as the RCBC Kabuyo Massacre. After years of being evasive, despite a trial of bank robberies organized by his group, Herbert was eventually arrested in January 2019 at an Iligan City checkpoint. In October 2014, Paranaque Regional Trial Court sentenced him to life imprisonment. Inside the National Penitentiary, Colango made an overhaul as he pursued his musical career, following his idol's footsteps, such as Michael Jackson, Martin Yabera, and Freddie Aguilar. From the notorious Ampang Colango to the new music icon, Herbert C., he was able to release an album entitled Kinabukasan through his complete recording studio within the Maximum Security Jail. A music video for one of its soundtracks Panayan was even shot inside the correction with apparently a complete crew set. The album, under Ivory Music, reached gold and platinum status. He was even awarded the new Male Recording Artist of the Year by the Philippine Movie Press Club, or PMPC, in 2014. However, his musical ambitions ended after the luxurious living inside Belibid was discovered by the authorities. The amenities that were built were demolished and the illegal paraphernalia was confiscated. The 19 inmates behind the anomaly, known as Belibid 19, were also transferred to different cell facilities with the hopes of dismantling the syndicates inside the prison. Days after President Rodrigo Duterte assumed office, Colango was tagged as one of the drug lords operating inside Belibid and warned him, together with other drug-related personalities, that they would die if they stepped out of jail. Hi, ako si Earl, ang inyong Camp Master sa Philippine Campfire Stories Podcast. This podcast is about stories of myths, legends, and true horror stories from the Philippines narrated in Tagalog, powered by Podcast Network Asia. Listen to Philippine Campfire Stories available in all major podcast platforms. A year before the tragic 2017 Ozamis police raid, Mayor Reynaldo Parohinog Sr. confirmed his daughter, Vice Mayor Nova Princess, has a relationship with Colango, which according to him, he wished would end. Parohinog said Nova Princess had just been annulled to Edgar E. Chavez, a former basketball player and the chairman of a barangay in the city. Nova Princess was held at the Camp Crame Custodial Center after the bloody police operation which killed his father and other relatives. On the other hand, Colango became a vital witness for the Department of Justice after testifying about former Justice Secretary and Opposition Senator Laila de Lima's involvement in the illicit drug trade inside the high-security prison. As of today, De Lima has been acquitted in one of her three conspiracies to drug trading charges by the Muntinlupa Regional Trial Court. Recently, several witnesses, such as Kerwin Espinosa and Ronnie Dayan, recanted their stories regarding the ex-senator's involvement in the illegal drug trade inside the new Belibid prison. However, Herbert Colango doubled down on his previous testimony 
regarding Dalima's involvement and told the media that he would reveal more information as the case moved forward. Colango and his representatives also claimed that a group was secretly approaching witnesses to weaken the case against the Lima, though these claims were debunked by the latter's legal counsel. Herbert Colango's criminal activity is as colorful as it could get. You guys would dare look at the crime scene photos from the RCBC Kabuya massacre. Our team lost a few days of sleep just looking at those gruesome pictures, wondering how a very dangerous criminal like Colango was able to live a zestful life inside the new Bilibid prison, while the family of his victims continued to mourn over their untimely deaths. For further updates, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at PH Murder Stories. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, PH Murder Stories. If you have case suggestions, please go to our website at phmurderstories.com and fill out the request form at File Your Blotter. Did you like this episode? Give us a rating on Apple Podcasts, or if you're listening on other platforms, kindly send us a review on our Facebook page or send us a tweet. You can also share our podcast to your Instagram and Facebook stories through Spotify. We're also inviting you to join our Facebook group, PH Murder Stories The Verdict, and participate in our discourse about true crime, both local and international. This group is a safe space for true crime and mystery fans like us who want to engage in thorough discussions about the subject. To all our listeners, we hope you could support us on Patreon. If you're fond of online shopping, you can also help our team earn a small commission by clicking our Lazada and Shopee affiliate links found in the description. Any amount you contribute will enormously help support our team to produce more quality content. The views and opinions expressed by the podcast creators, hosts, and guests do not necessarily reflect the official policy and position of Podcast Network Asia, the hosts of the program, or other programs of the network. Any content provided by the people on the podcast are of their own opinion and are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone or anything.